Good morning. I'm all in. Are you all in? And man, that's a video I love getting. I'm excited today. I think I'm just looking forward to today just being a, a great worship service as we get to share with you what Vacation Bible School did. Uh, and, and I missed one day, most of it. I, was, I got there for the end of it. But the other two days, I, it was just fantastic. And we got uh, the slideshow going in the back. Uh, immediately after worship, we'll have uh, some sandwiches and cookies and some lemonade and, and, and time for, to share and some fellowship. Praise team will be uh, joining us and singing. Uh, we invite you to stay for a little bit with fellowship and, and look at, uh, watch the videos as uh, what the kids did during those three days. Uh, it was just a wonderful opportunity. Um, not a lot of prayer requests that... that I have to lift up right now. If you look at the bulletin, we're going to have Vacation Bible School. And then right after that, we're going to have the backpack blessing. We, we bring the, you know, keep the kids up here and, and do some things with you. Just prepare you now. If you are a teacher, are you involved in the school system in any way, shape, or form? We're going to ask you to come up as well. Normally, we would have done this at the beginning of the school year. But because of Vacation Bible School and the way that that was working out, we wanted to wait until this Sunday to make that happen. So uh, those are the things that uh, we're going to look at doing uh, during the day. If you are joining us online, we welcome you. We're glad that you've taken this time to worship with us. We invite you to hit the like and comment section. Uh, share with as many people as you can. Get the word out. And in that comment section, if you have a prayer request, when you come to that time of prayer, if you would like to type in uh, the comment section what your prayer request is, we get that into the office and get that out to our congregation uh, and lift those, those prayers up as well. So I'm going to invite uh, Leanne, if you want to bring the kids on up, and they're going to join the praise team. And as they're coming up, will you pray with me? Almighty God, in the beauty of this place, we've come to pray, to worship, to receive healing and hope. God, we come from the struggles and the triumphs of this week, needing to feel the soothing presence of yours, you, God. We ask that you simply be with us this day. Calm and soothe our souls. Cause us to rejoice that you have provided a special place where we may gather to talk of your presence, to celebrate your love, to sing your praises, but more importantly, to be empowered to go forth into this world to serve you. We ask this in the mighty name of Jesus, the risen Christ. Amen. Doug? Good morning. Okay, uh, we're going to do a little surprise here. For some of you, it's going to be a surprise, and some of you are going to give me dirty looks. Um, first of all, you notice the song title up here has absolutely, probably, to my knowledge, nothing to do with the sermon and everything to do with what they were doing this week. However... There are at least four or five, maybe six, former Sabbath singers sitting out here in the crowd. So y'all come up. Let's go. Come on. Sing with your kids. Come up and sing. Come on, Vern. I know you're back there. All the way back up. I'm not going to make you stand in front. Come on back up here. You can stand behind your kids. You don't have to stand in front. I love the come on, Mama. Did you hear that? Yeah. Ah, I found you. <laughs> okay, kids, turn around real quick and look at me. Okay, and then you'll turn around again, but let's just go over the motions of this one more time. And any big kids who want to do this in your seats, go for it. Okay, ready? What was Pharaoh? Ready? Clap on the verses. All right, turn around. Here we go. We got this. See how talented the adults are up here and how quick they can pick up on this? For those of you who don't know, this was every, worst, every retreat we went on, we sang this stupid song a half a dozen times. So we're going we're gonna to try. You do what? Can you do the motions your way? Oh, I didn't know there was a... Oh, sorry. Okay. Oh. Did you hear the teacher, in the, the teacher in the back row? New math and old math. Here we go. <clears throat> One, two, three, four. Here we go. There, there.
what Vacation Bible School was about for us. You know, he does do marvelous things. And that's what the kids celebrated through God's Wonder Lab. We learned about the miracles that Jesus performed that showed that he was the Son of God. And these kids had a party every day celebrating that message. I want you to hear a little bit from them about what their favorite parts were in Vacation Bible School and what they learned. So watch this short video. Hi, my name is Queen Sidewalk. And when the, the thing I like of the vacation Bible school is when we played outside with the water. Go. I like the um song with the king cat song. Hi, my name is Emery and I liked about what I liked about vacation Bible school is when I went upstairs to see Miss Laura and she did all those science projects. My favorite part of Bible school is playing games outside and I learned new songs. My favorite thing about Bible school was learning the verses. Um, my favorite part of Bible school, it was when we were singing downstairs at the beginning. What was your favorite song? My favorite song was Let's Have a Party. Mm, what did you learn? And goodbye. <laughs> when I was at VBS, I really liked when we made the kite. That was like really fun. When when I made that sand bite, it was really fun too. Hi, my name is Harper Hedges. What I liked about Vacation Bible School when um, we were singing and when Miss Ed popped up and then Miss Ed popped up. My, my favorite part of Vacation Bible School was my favorite lesson was lesson two, God Walks on Water. Mm -hmm. my, my favorite station was the story station and my... My favorite song was Feral Feral. <laughs> what I liked about Bible school was making crafts, making food, and making new friends. Favorite favorite things, yeah. Good job, guys. On their evenings here, we spent time opening and closing in worship and prayer and music, and then they rotated through five different rotations. They went to a storytelling station, Bible challenge, where they learned how to open the Bible and find the verses and understand their memory verse for the night. They played games, had snacks, and did crafts that all related back to the message for the night. It was an amazing experience. They got to do science experiments as well and kind of see the amazing things that we can do, but the amazing things that Jesus can do without science or technology was even more exciting. The kids had the opportunity to vote on their favorite mission project. 
So they got to choose from three different ones, and they chose. Can you guys tell them what you chose? What was our mission project? The food pantry. So they voted to support the food pantry, and they raised $103.06 to donate. They did an amazing job, and we're just so proud of them. And just seeing them all up here having an exciting time makes it all worth it. So we're going to close with two of their favorite songs, and you'll, you've heard them referenced, so you guys are actually going to have to participate a little bit, too. And before we get to those last two songs, um, Leanne's thanked everybody, but thank you, Leanne, for bringing this back. Okay, we're going to divide you in two, so... Ella, why don't you go this way? Ella, you go this way, okay. So if you guys come down here. This side comes this way. Some of you over here. Okay. okay. And then we're going to need your help. Now, if you don't want to stand and get your work out this morning, if you would just raise your hand, that would be great. And then you guys are going to squat instead of sit, okay? Some of you are going to know this song. It's Hallelujah, 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 Praise You, the Lord. So if you're on this side, you're going to go with the kids and do and stand or raise your hands on hallelujah and then sit on praise ye and then this side you're going to stand or raise your hands on praise ye and sit on hallelujah and then we clap kind of through an interlude and then the second song they may come out and ask you to high five them so just go with it all right here we go <laughs> that one because the cat in the video which we don't know why there was a cat in the video okay here we go you ready get a little crazy with us thanks for watching life tree kids
Right, kids are going to get their backpacks and you go into the uh, backpack blessing, but and and Janice already said this, but I just want to uh, lift up Leanne again. We have, when we had when we talked about having vacation Bible school, and it's the first time we've had it in the four years I've been here. Leanne said that she would take charge of it and arrange to work. Now we couldn't have done it without all of your help. There, there's no question about that. There's so many of you that participated, and I would invite you to look at the videos as they're uh, playing in the in the back. Uh, after worship service, you can see Dr. Marshall in her white coat um, and some other people uh, doing, doing all the, the various activities. But Leanne orchestrated it all, got it all organized, got the material, uh, and we couldn't have done this without her. So give her another round of thanks. Amen. Amen. Now, we normally would have done this before you went off to school, but we didn't get a chance to do that. But we want to do that now. We want to send you off, bathe you in prayer, and pray that God would take care of you during this school year, that he would watch over you. So we're going to say a couple of prayers first. So first one is are for all of you kids, okay? So will you pray with me? Lord God, we ask that you would bless these backpacks, the children, who carry them as they begin yet another year of school. We ask that you would give them peace when they feel nervous, that you would let them focus when they feel distracted, that you would give them energy when they are tired. We ask that you would open their minds to the lessons that they will learn both in and outside the classroom. Pray that you would help them make new friends that build one another up to be friends to those who need friends. That you'd guide them in making good choices as they grow in wisdom and maturity. And God, we ask that you would be with them every single day in the classroom, on the school bus, on the playground, at home, and that all that they do, they would feel your loving care. We ask this in your precious name. Amen. Now, don't go away, kids. So if you are a teacher, if you are working in the school system in any capacity, we're not going to ask you to come up, but we are going to ask you to stand. Yeah. And we want to, we want to say a prayer for you as well. So we pray with me again. Lord God, we ask that you would bless these in ministry involved in teaching future generations, working with these young children. And as they embark on a new school year, we ask your presence to grant them energy, passion, discipline, and endurance for the daily task. We ask that you would infuse their classrooms with an atmosphere of care and respect, that all the interactions that they have will be bathed in patience and understanding, Help the lessons to grow peoples in both knowledge and character. And most of all, God, help us to help them support the work that they do in building up our community and building up our future. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So now we're going to pray for the actual backpacks that you carry because I'm looking at some of those backpacks and they look pretty heavy. Are they heavy? Henry, is your pack heavy? Yeah? It is. Wow. Yours is not that heavy. You're strong, right? Okay. Well, let's pray with let's pray for those as well. Lord God, pour out your blessing upon these backpacks, these school supplies that the children will use. Let them let these physical gifts be symbols of love and support. Give to the children of our community your love, and your patience. And Lord God, help us to look upon each and every one of them as one of our own, helping them to grow in character and knowledge. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you can all go back to wherever you... Leanne, are you taking them to go all the way back? I don't know about you, but I feel like I've already worshipped and we could just leave...
uh, now and go enjoy the sandwiches and cookies, but you're not going to be that lucky. <laughs> Sorry, Doug. She does control. <laughs> Two people I always have to be aware of, Jim or Lynn, depending on who's on the soundboard. They have the power to mute me. And my wife, she has that power too, but anyway. Um, if we go into a time of prayer, we're going to lift up uh, some prayer requests. As, as you are worshiping online, again, we invite you to join us in the comment section. If you have a certain prayer request, an individual that needs uh, praying for, if you could put that in, in the comment section, and we would get them into the office and get them out to our community as, as soon as possible. Ken Miller is with us. Ken had went in for some tests and, and uh, was going to have a valve replaced and ended up having uh, a couple stents put in. Uh, and, but Ken is here in Dolores and, and uh, we are so glad. Yeah, you can clap for that. Um, we're glad that that, that that surgery went successful and uh, still needs the valve replaced at a time a later time uh, down the road, but uh, we're glad that you're here with us worshiping now. Um, those are the prayer requests I know of. You got the list from Lynn that sends out. Again, we simply ask that you put that in a place of uh, prominence, a place where you are going to go. And, you know, as we talked last week, you know, some of you go to prayer at different times. Some, uh, it, you know, you're, you're a morning person. You need to get the, those prayer concerns out. You need to to, to find a time to quiet yourself uh, and be in the presence of God during that morning. For others, it could be sometime during the day. It could be late at evening. Whenever that is, whatever that is that works for you, we ask that you have this list somewhere close. That when you are going to the Lord in prayer, that you can lift these prayer concerns uh, up to God as well. Let's sing our prayer hymn, Near to the Heart of God. Uh, and then go into a time of silence, allowing you to take your own uh, private concerns uh, or simply listen for God to speak to you. Near to the heart of God. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us as we gather in this place. Allow your spirit to fill our very being. As we worship you today, remembering our brothers and sisters who are worshiping throughout this land, throughout this world, Our prayer is that you would inspire each and every one of us to work more faithfully for justice and dignity of life everywhere. We pray that you would help us find that common ground where we can meet with mutual respect and tolerance. All that can lead to loving our neighbors as ourselves. Lord God, help us to, to model the values that we honor so much that our speech is not seen as hypocritical or contrary to our actual way of life. Help us to seek consensus with others as to what is best for all of us. Speaking the truth. Be 
speaking the truth that we see with love, not arrogance. Give us a peace of mind and help us trust in you. Help us be an example to those who are confused, depressed, anxious. Lord God, pour out your healing spirit on us that you would heal our illnesses, our diseases of body, mind, spirit. And so, Lord God, we come to you this morning. We lift up to you names and family, friends, loved ones, of strangers. Each and every one of them in need of your healing touch. To feel your presence. And in the midst of that presence, find comfort and hope. Lord God, we give you thanks for the successful surgery that Ken has had. And yet, God, we know that there is still healing that needs to take place. And so we pray for Ken. We pray for that healing that has taken place. And we pray for the doctors and nurses that will be working to replace that valve at a future date. Lord God, when that time comes, we pray that you would guide their hands, their decisions that they make, that that valve replacement would go smoothly. Ken would be back united with Dolores and families as soon as possible. But God, we give you thanks. We often come to you with our hurts, our pains, our questions, seldom giving you thanks for the blessings that you bestowed upon us, but we give you thanks this day. We give you thanks for Leanne and her leadership in the Vacation Bible School. We give you thanks for the 20-plus members of this church or neighbors that, that reached out and helped in, in so many different ways. We give you thanks for the kids who came, some of them traveling from long distances simply to be here. We give you thanks for this house of worship, for opening their doors to try to teach these kids the words of Jesus. Lord God, we ask that you would continue to guide us and lead us as a community of faith right here in, in Hebron, that we would continue to be witnesses of your love witnesses of the blessings that you can provide if, if we all would simply stop, slow down, take a look, realize the blessings that we have right in front of us. So Lord God, as we go throughout this day, as we participate in fellowship after this service, as we continue to watch the videos, watching the kids, watching the young adults, Pour out your Holy Spirit on us. Guide us and give us discernment on where you are calling us next. Be your hands and feet. We ask this in the name of your Son, our Lord and Savior, who taught us to pray with these words, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
It has just been a wonderful uh, morning for me. I hope it has been for you. I want to give you thanks for the support that you have for this church, the support that you have for not only uh, for Vacation Bible School, but the support that you have in what you are doing. So I might stop. Every once in a while, I got to watch them as well. But again, we want to give you thanks for your continued support. Um, you have been faithful in returning your tithes and giving what you can, even if it's simply your time, and we appreciate that. Will you join me in our prayer of dedication? God of goodness and mercy, we bring you our offerings. We laud you with thanksgiving for the blessings that you bestow. You fill us with hope. We give you our commitment. You instill in us confidence. We offer our trust. You teach us how to sacrifice. We seek to be faithful. You call us to obey you. We pledge our allegiance. All that we have, we place before you. Use us and mold us to conform to your will. Amen. You may remain seated as we sing our hymn, Standing on the Promises. Scripture reading this morning is from the Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 20. And it goes as follows. Finally, <clears throat> be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of the evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand. Stand firm, then, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the word of the Spirit, which is the word of God. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Pray also for me, that whatever I speak words, I may be given to me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel, 
for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Denny. If, if any of you have ever gone out uh, to, to visit a, a family, maybe a friend, or one reason or another, gone to a, a senior citizen facility, you have expectations of, of what you might expect to see. I mean, you know, I don't know about you, but I, there's a feeling, you know, you know, conjure up pictures of what you might come, come in contact with. You might see a bunch of seniors just sitting around drinking their, their, their coffee or tea or, or whatever. You might see some that are, you know, playing some kind of card game or working on a, on a puzzle. You know, and you might see them just hanging out in, in some, some common area. You know, um, maybe they're engaging in a game of checkers or chess or um, whatever that may be. But what you might be surprised to understand that at some of those facilities, those, those common areas are, are kind of, everything's moved out. And what you have, those, those, those tranquil places are transformed into a sort of dojo, if you will, where there is some robed sensei that is pitting grandma and grandpa against each other in what might seem to be mortal combat. Now you'll laugh, but see, it is a training session for senior citizens to help them understand the danger that they may feel in the real world. That, now they're not learning karate chops, they're not learning, you know, some kind of how to handle the kendo sticks or, or you know, the, throwing those three-pointed stars. You know, that's not what they're learning. What they're learning is how to use their cane in the most effective manner. Because while grandma might look a little helpless walking uh, with her cane in the grocery store, if grandma knows how to use that cane effectively, she can create some serious damage. Can put a young man down rather quickly if she understands how to use it. There's a, as, as a martial art instructor by the name of Buck Buckmaster, who is teaching these senior citizens how to use their cane in the most effective manner. And, I, and he, he, he started this because he, his own mother, 69-year-old mother, had been attacked. And so he just felt the call to try to help senior citizens learn how to, to defend themselves with their canes. Part of that training is to recognize their, outs, their, their surroundings, that, that don't put yourself in a situation that you may find yourself in harm's way. But, but you and I know that that's not always possible. So what he's teaching them is how to use their canes, how to use their cane to bust a shin or crack a skull or do a neck pull or to poke them in places that you don't want to be poked. Now, I know, you, I know some of you are already th thinking of it. You want to sing the song, Everybody Was Kain Fu Fighting. <laughs> I know some of you have, have got that going in the back of your mind right now. Understand, you know, we normally associate a cane with disability, but a cane can be an effective weapon. And it's with you all the time. It's, you know, it's, it's a medical device. It, you know, carried on an airplane. It can be, it's, it's you know, a, a gun you got to pull out of a holster, a knife you got to pull out of a sheath, but a cane, the cane is there. And so Buck, Buckmaster wants to teach these senior citizens 
how to effectively use it. I mean, it's almost like giving new thought to Teddy Roosevelt, you know, the saying, right? Speak softly, but carry an effective cane. You know? To talk about the cane, because the cane, you know, Buckmaster wants to help the senior citizens defend themselves. We've been going through the last month, basically, through the book of Ephesians. Next month, we'll concentrate on James. The last month, the last four weeks or so, we've been talking about Ephesians. We've been talking about Paul's message to the Ephesians on how to live their lives and how to be on guard at all the times. Paul's message, remember that who the, the Ephesians were, that, you know, the, 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 the scenario that Paul finds himself you know, Ephesus was, a, was an important port city, and it was oftentimes, most of the time, filled with pagans. And so you have this pocket of Christianity surrounded by not-so-Christian people. And so as Paul's closing out his Ephesians, he wants to remind them on how to live their lives. And, and it's really an effective tool on how we can live our lives. How we are supposed to always be on guard. Paul's reminding them, he says, you know, you're not always welcome. In fact, you are you may be this pocket of Christianity surrounded by by these pagans, you know, and you may find yourself today in a place where you are not welcome as a faith community. You are not welcome as a person of faith. There are those out there who really don't care. Jesse Ventura, you may remember him, you know, the, the pro wrestler turned governor of Minnesota at one time, says, I have no use for people of faith. They're weak. You know, they need a crutch. Larry Flint, the, you know, the pornographer, basically says the same thing. I had no time for religion. There are people out there who don't care about your faith. And there are people out there that don't care if you are a Christian. And, and Paul's letter to the Ephesians, his closing argument, is how do we live our lives when we find ourselves in that type of environment? Because you know that you can go, you know, we're, we're here this morning. We're in the house of worship but you're going to find yourself in various places throughout your work week. And sometimes I'm not going to be as deep in the faith as other times. You're going to find yourself outside in the world in times when the world doesn't really care whether you believe in Jesus or not. And so Paul's word, his message is how to encourage you to continue that fight knowing that there are going to be times when, when we're going to be in an environment that is not conducive to Christianity where you may, you may find yourself speaking with someone who doesn't have the strong faith in Jesus Christ as you do Paul gives us just a brief way of leading our lives to remind you that you know if there are people who are going to look at you and your faith as a crutch Paul wants you to know that you know what let them think of that as a crutch but to you it can be a sizable weapon if you know how to use it if you know how to live in your faith how do you how to be that keen fool Christian. So Paul just lifts up a couple of comments. And he reminds them that, you know, it's not the people who want to really kill us, take us our body and soul away. It's the other people who just want to act like they're your friend and then turn on you. That there are people in the world, it's, it's not those people who would really are going to do us bodily harm, but it's the people 
who are going to act as if they're your friends that can do more damage. So how, how can we be on guard? And how can we let our Christianity guide us in the way that we live our lives and how we deal with one another? Paul's first words is, live as children of the light. That you've been given a gift of Jesus Christ. Or most uh, anything else, remember the gift that you've been given. The promise of eternal life for all those who believe. But Paul says, remember to live as children of the light. To avoid those places that you can avoid. And in AA, we say, don't set ourselves up to be failures. Paul's reminding the people the same thing. Really, avoid those places. But, but you and I know that that's not always possible. That we will find ourselves in situations we really don't want to be in. But we have no way of avoiding. Paul says, remember then who you are. You've got this gift. wonderful gift the word of God for the people of God remember the gift that you've been given remember the stories that are in there because and and it's not just the words because you can go down a rabbit hole if you concentrate on a certain word a certain story a certain paragraph but you have to take the word of God as a whole. And, and the word of God as a whole is this, this book. This wonderful book that we've been given is a story about how much God loves you. And what God has done for you and what God continues to do for you. Remember that you have got this gift. Lead, live as children of the life. Put on the breast breastplate of righteousness. Now, for Paul, that meant you know what's right and wrong. You can't sugarcoat that. You know what's right and wrong. Be people who do the right thing all the time. Because that's how we survive. Knowing that there are going to be people who are going to tempt you. The temptation is right around the corner. And, and if we're not careful, we could fall into that trap. But be people of the light. Remember the word of God. Remember to do the right thing. Because it's always the right time to do the right thing. Paul's breastplate of righteousness is to live the right way. To live according to the teachings of Jesus. He said, be proactive. For Paul it was, be willing to speak to others about Jesus. You never know when you are given that opportunity how much you can change a person. You never know when you are speaking about the word of God how you may change a heart. Simply because of something you said or the way that you lead your life. Paul says, travel with, with a buddy. You know, it's, it's why we come to church on Sunday morning. You know, we sing our praises. We have our fellowship. We, have the, we come together because that's what we do as the body of Christ. We are there to support one another. We're there because you never know the kind word that you Say to someone, and it may just be a hi, I'm glad you're here. But you have no idea of what that message can mean to someone else. Travel with buddies. Be together as the body of Christ. That's why we gather together in church, recognizing that you know, the old saying, and, and I will get it wrong, but it goes something like, you know I, know, I know I'm not the person that God wants me to be. I know that. 
But I also know that I'm not the person I used to be. And there's a big difference. Because God can continue to work in me. God can continue to work in you. God can continue to work in the person you're sitting to. Changing them. Changing their heart. Change my heart, oh God. Immerse yourself in scripture. Find yourself a favorite Bible verse. And there are so many to choose from. But find one that speaks to you. I often have conversations with, with, other, with other people who say, well, how do I do that? What, what does that mean? It doesn't mean that one Bible verse is any more important than the other one. But it does mean there is a verse out there that speaks to you, that draws you closer to God. Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the plans that I have for you, saith the Lord. Plans to use you and not harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Find a verse that speaks to you. Paul says, pray without ceasing. Never give up hope. Put on all of these, these tools that Paul says. And he goes into greater detail. I encourage you to read that last chapter of Ephesians. To understand there are tools that we have available to us in this book. Paul simply is reminding them, remind you and I, we are people of God. We are called to do the right thing, not necessarily the easy thing. We're called to live as people who love one another. Just as Christ has loved his church. And as Christ has loved you. I'm going to ask the praise team to come on up as they get ready to sing their song. Because it's a song that speaks. Ancient words. So often we read the Bible as if we're reading a novel. But take time to really put yourself in the story. To understand where God is speaking to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Will you stand and join us?
Paul's reminder of the Ephesians is that you have everything you need to survive in this world. The words that he spoke way back then apply to us even today. We have the tools to survive in this world. The words of Jesus Christ to help us live the life worthy of his calling. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and every day. Go in peace. And the peace of God goes with you. Now, before they sing their reprise, we know we're going to have fellowship back there. I think we have the sandwiches. I'm getting a nod. Yes, no. We have the sandwiches and the cookies and the drink and everything's back there. Let me say a blessing over the thing. Grace and loving God, we give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks for, for these disciples gathered here. We gather here because our love that we have for you and the love we have for one another. Bless this food that we are about to receive, the hands that are prepared to use it to nourish our body. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Ancient words.